In this video, we're going to look at a structure called word to vec It takes advantage of the following intuition. If you don't know a word, you can probably guess what it means from its neighboring words. It's going to use the neighboring words of a target word to describe the meaning and then give us the meaning in a vector, in a feature system. So let's talk about meaning. Sometimes as humans, we find words that we don't understand, that we've never seen before, and we have to try to guess what they could possibly mean. For example, ong choi. What does the word ong choi mean? If you've never heard it before and I just tell you that, then you probably wouldn't have a clue about what it means. But what if I give you the word ong choi in context with sentences like, Ong choi is delicious sauteed with garlic, or ong choi is superb over rice, or ong choi leaves with salty sauces, so on and so forth. If I ask you again, what does ong choi mean? Maybe you won't know exactly, but you might have an idea. Maybe it's some kind of food, maybe it's some kind of leaf, maybe it's something that you eat warm uh, because you have to saute it. We don't really know what it means, but again, we would assume that it's something similar to spinach, to kale, to leafy vegetables in general, because the words, uh, the word ong choi appears with garlic, with rice, with leaves, and it, this is something that the word spinach also does. The word spinach frequently occurs with words like garlic, rice, and leaves. Indeed, this is an ong choy, also known as uh, water spinach or morning glory. It's absolutely delicious. Here, we had a target word that was ong choy, and we were trying to figure out what that target word means. And we also have a context for the word, words that are previously co that um, frequently co-occur with ong choy, words as delicious, sautéed, garlic and so forth. So maybe we don't know the target word, but we can describe it with uh, using its neighboring words, the words that, it, that occur before it or after it in context. Let's take this idea and see where it takes us. Here we have an example of a sentence, natural language processing and machine learning is fun and exciting. And we want to figure out what those words mean. Natural language processing and and so forth, marked here in orange. In order for us to look at the context, we need to figure out how much context we want to look at. Maybe we want to look 20 words around us, five words around us. Let's take a conservative size and look at four words around us. Two preceding words and two following words. This method is gonna be called the skip gram because we're gonna use the target and then skip through the text, skipping from word to word to look at its context. Let's look at um, row number five, machine. So the word machine is preceded by the words processing and and. And the word machine is followed by the words learning and is. These are the words that are going to occur in the window of machine, the target word. Machine is going to be the target and processing and learning is are going to be the context. Let's look at row number one, the word natural. Natural is surrounded by two words that follow it, language and processing, but by no words that precede it because there were no previous words in the sentence. So in that case, the window is just going to be the words language. It's just going to include the words language and processing. So from here, we can make a series of vectors. On the left, we have a very simple vector uh, that goes in columns. And the first one, the ones with the orange color, are called the target embedding. 
target because they refer to the target word, the word we are currently studying. So for natural, this vector is going to have the value of 1 because we are talking about the word natural. It's going to have the value of 0 for everything else because language is not the word natural, processing is not the word natural, 0, 0, 0, and so forth. In the matrix on the right, the one for row number 5, or the word machine, we have the target embedding 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. We have a 1 there because this refers to the word machine and not the other words. And by the way, take a look at the far left at the words that we're looking at. Natural, language processing, and machine learning is fun, exciting. This is the unique tokens that we have in the text. We do not count and twice. So the rows in these matrices are the unique words that we find in the document that we're looking at. So again, the target embeddings just have a 1 or a 0. 1 if it's the word we're looking at and 0 for everything else. We also have context vectors. These are going to have a 1 if this word appears in the window or the context of the target word. So in the matrix for natural on the left, we have the first vector for target words, which, is, which has a 1 for language and 0 for everything else. This means that the word language is contained in the context of natural. The second matrix, I'm sorry, the second vector for, na for the context of natural is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. This is because this contains the word processing. And so those two context vectors describe the words in the context of natural. For the matrix on the right, we have four context vectors. The one that has a one for processing, for and, for learning and for is, and everything else is zero 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 zero. So for every word, every word we have the target vector, which tells us what word we're talking about, natural or machine, and we have the context words, which tell us whether that word exists in the context of the target word or not. So if we squash together our context vectors, we would have one vector that tells us whether the word has ever appeared in the context window of the target. These are the context embeddings. In the case of natural, we have again the target vector, which is the orange one that just has a one for natural. And then the context embedding has 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. It has a 1 for language because language is a word that is found in the window around natural. It also has a word for it also has a 1 for processing because processing is found in the window around natural. Let's turn to the matrix on the right. The context embedding for the word machine is 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. This is because there are some words that are found in the context of machine. Those words are processing and learning is. <laughs> Those have a value of one. There are some words that are not found in the context of machine. Those are natural, language, uh, machine, fun, exciting. And those are marked with a zero. So the context embedding tells you which words are in the context of the target. So we can build an entire matrix out of these. For example, a target matrix, which is all of the target vectors. This example has only two, natural and machine. So the first column of the target matrix is for the word natural, and it's a one because it's the word natural. And the second column is the, for the word machine, and it has a one only in machine. This is the target words. Then we have the matrix for the context words, which again 
tells you which words appeared in the context of something. So the first column corresponds to the context of natural, which, uh, which is the words machine and processing. And the second column corresponds to the context of machine, which is processing and learning is. So we have target vectors and context vectors. The context describe which words co-occur with the targets. We're also going to throw in a few words that were not in uh, the context so that the computer can get negative examples, so that the computer can also see things that maybe were not there. We're going to choose them at random from the text and for example, we could have the word sushi in there. Let's imagine that the document did include the word sushi at some point. So we have a new row, I'm sorry, a new column for the target matrix, the column for sushi that has a one in sushi telling us that we're talking about sushi. We have the context matrix, which has a new row. This one is zero and zero because sushi never appeared in the context of natural and in the context of machine. But we have it there so that the computer can learn from positive examples and from negative examples. And now what we need to do is to come up with some vector with some series of numbers that connects these two matrices. For example, if we give it the target matrix, we need to come up with some transformation that gives us the context matrix. Likewise, if we give it the context matrix, we need some transformation that gives us the target matrix. Those numbers that generate the transformation are going to be called a word to vec matrix. How do we calculate this? If you have not taken uh, machine learning or a class with mm, neural networks, please ignore this for now and we'll come back to this on week six. If you have taken machine learning, there's basic, it's basically a neural network. It has a hidden layer and so it has uh, input neurons, weights into the hidden layer, weights into an output layer, and this uh, neural network is trained back and forth until we get good predictions. Predictions of what? It could go either way. Um, there's a way of making word to vex, which is called CBO, continued bag of words, which gets the, um, yes, this gets the target vectors and generates the Con uh, I'm sorry, this is the other way around. The SIBO gets the context, trains to generate the target vectors, and then the weights of the between the first layer and the hidden layer are the word to vec values. So for the SIBO, you, get, you, you have the context as input, you try to generate the target as the output, and you use the weights as the word to vec values. In skipgram, in the one on the right, you take um, the target vectors and you try to predict the context vectors. And it's the same structure. The weights in between the input and the first hidden layer are the word to vec. So we can train the target to predict the context or the context to predict the target. And the weights that we get are the word to vec values. A word to vec uh, matrix looks something like this. This is the first line of a Spanish language word to vec trained on Wikipedia text. And as you can see, it's a huge series of basically uh, weight values for a neural network. This they vary. Uh, var they have different sizes. So sometimes word to vex are as small as 50 features. That's the smallest value they need in order for them to work. Sometimes they can be 200 features. Sometimes they, sometimes they can be 300 features. Beyond 300, the performance does not really improve. So this is the maximum size that these are. 
This is the first uh, line of the word tuvec in Spanish, and it's the word de, which means of. And you can see the different weights there. This is the second word, the word la, which is it means the, among other things. As you can see, it's a different set of weights. One interesting property of a word to vec is that the vectors are very dense. They all have values. Almost none of them are zeros. In theory, we could represent a word with just zeros and ones, like we were doing in our target matrices and our context matrices. Um, for example, in our system from the first video, we had sushi, Hanover, and origami, so we could represent those words as 100, zero, 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 010, zero, or zero, zero, 001. This system, by the way, would be called a hot, one hot encoding. However, doing it like this has two disadvantages. First, these vectors are very sparse. They're full of zeros. Also, they tell you that the word exists, that this is the word sushi, but they don't tell you much else. They don't give you information about the meaning of the word, which would be something very desirable. word to vec is very dense, and because of its connections, it captures some of the meaning of the words, of the semantics of the words, because it, when you're training it, it takes into account all of its neighbors. So ong choy, spinach, kale are going to have very similar neighbors, and so they're going to have very similar word to vec values. In summary, a word to vec is a, is a structure with the uh, can be 50 features, can be 200, 300 features, and it describes the meaning of a word based on its neighboring words. And as we shall see in the next video, the, this has very interesting properties. Indeed, the weights for words like ong choy, spinach, and kale are very similar, so we're going to be able to capture a lot of meaning and a lot of, a lot of analogies between words using a word to vec.